Good afternoon, this is Robin Harvey, Chair of the Building and Contracts Committee. The first item we have today is a presentation on the preliminary design for Scott's Branch Elementary School. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixon and staff. So good evening, uh, Ms. Robin. Um, the purpose today is to share the design with the board, with the building committee and the general board. This is about Scott's Branch Elementary School, which is in the northwest part of the county. The project, the design and construction for the project has been approved by the board as part of the capital improvement program. Before we start the presentation, I just wanted to acknowledge some folks here. Uh, in the development of design, uh, our team has closely worked with school administration, Principal Lauren Tillman, uh, the executive director, Dr. Morrow, and school's champions committee. So we wanted to thank them for their participation and team members from Dr. DiDonato's team in the development of EdSpec, which eventually uh, is the scope of work uh, for the architect. We'll also acknowledge my team, uh, uh, the director of construction, Mr. Plate, uh, and Mr. Mike Archbold, uh, Katie Angstad, and the project manager Mark Core, uh, with a whole bunch of other people. But these are some of the key folks that have been involved in the development of design or, or defining the scope of work for the design team. With that said, I request you to save your questions in the interest of time uh, and feel free to ask any question after the presentation is complete. And I'll hand it over to Mr. David Rekia from JMT Architects, which is the architectural and engineering team for this project. David. Thank you, Pete. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity to present uh, the preliminary design presentation for Scotts Branch Elementary School. Um, talk about some general information, the existing conditions, project goals, location, some of the site conditions we're dealing with, uh, and then we'll get into the building organization renderings and questions at the end. The uh, project is located on the uh, west side of Baltimore County in the Randallstown area. When we look at the surrounding areas within a uh, one mile and two mile radius. Uh, these are the uh, primary schools that are in the direct vicinity of Scotts Branch Elementary School. And then these are the uh, the middle middle schools uh, within that same uh, boundary area. Looking at some of the uh, images of the existing Scotts Branch uh, Elementary School built in 1960, uh, it, it was done in a modernist uh, style of that time, very horizontal lines. The building is a one story building. What you're seeing here is the uh, the entry with the gymnasium to the to the left of it. Again, uh, again, uh, horizontal lines uh, with the canopy projecting out, which sort of was the uh, inspiration as we move forward with the design of the project. Again, some more views. Um, the upper left is the corner of the cafeteria with the glass at the left and then the, the uh, um, kitchen area to the right. Uh, the courtyard, the upper, upper right hand side courtyard with the modular uh, classrooms in it. Uh, one of the wings to the lower left and again an overall sort of front view of the existing building. So again, we're talking about uh, a replacement elementary school for the one originally constructed in 1960. The existing state rated uh, capacity is 456 with a current enrollment of 469. We are looking to uh, raise that to a uh, state rated capacity of 574. The existing building is just under 57,000 uh, square feet and the new building is just under 97,000 square feet. Um, we have a special educational regional program we are putting in the school, as well as we're including the uh, Blueprint for Maryland's Future Early Childhood Education. So our project goals, uh, supporting the 21st century learning environment and uh, collaborative learning areas are very important, breakout spaces, 
and in this in this particular case, a lot of the design features of this building are for flexibility, knowing that the building's going to have to undergo transitions for changes in educational delivery, changes in uh, attendance and, and, and student uh, um, where they're coming from. So all that's taken into account with uh, the design of this project. We have uh, sustainable design strategies. Summing up, uh, basically, we're using uh, two green globes, which is a lead silver equivalent. Uh, safety and security, um, using the secure vestibule and intercom system, uh, cameras, all those typical things that uh, are utilized in today's world to keep the students, keep the faculty, uh, safe. Uh, design features again, the blueprint for Maryland's future early childhood education, um, the compact footprint, uh, and uh, through the, the course of design, you'll see uh, we've added some additional uh, outdoor space in, in the name of an additional ball field. So here's the the site taken from an aerial view um, to the south, Tonmore Road, to the west, Rolling Road, and to the north, Church Lane. Looking at it from a more uh, pictorial uh, site plan, again, the same, the same roads. You have the existing school. The main entry faces south, faces the uh, back of a retail area that fronts onto Liberty Road, uh, and the grade goes from Tonmore down uh, to Church Lane. The bus loop at the front of the building, the student drop off at the side of the building, and parking areas across the, the, the front and side of the building. There are uh, seven modulars uh, on the site right now. Two existing play fields, uh, the existing uh, Recreation Activity Center, uh, Parks and Rec's building, is in the middle of the site, which has posed some challenges throughout the uh, design process of Scotts Branch Elementary School. Uh, there's an existing hard surface play court adjacent to the Rack Center, and two ball fields uh, in, at the north side at the back of the building. In the white uh, dashed lines, that is the projected uh, development for the new building and the new site plan. So when the existing building is, is constructed, the existing build, the new building is constructed, the existing building will be raised and fields constructed. So again, now you have the building, the new building fronting on Church Lane in lieu of uh, fronting on Tonmore. And you see the dash lines there, or what was there, uh, what is currently there now, what was there when, the, when this building will be constructed. So you have the new school, the rack center again in the center of the site, creating some restrictions of, of how we could design the building. So the main entry again faces Church Lane. There is a bus walker entrance at the back of the building that's only used for arrival and dismissal. Bus loop coming off of Rolling Road. Parking coming off of Church Lane. Deliveries and service to the side of the building, the east side of the building. And then hard surface play courts to the, to the west playgrounds. And again, as uh, I said earlier, we pick up an existing or a new uh, athletic field uh, in, the in the shape of a ball diamond and also a uh, multi-purpose field, which is that the, the one field in the middle. So student drop off, as you see the blue arrows, they come in, parents would come in off of Church Lane, circle around the outside of the parking lot, drop their children off, at the front of the school and then exit back out onto Church Lane. The bus loop following the yellow arrows comes in off a rolling road, circles around, drops the children off at the back of the 
uh, school at the uh, second entrance, again, used only for arrival and dismissal, and then exits the site uh, on Rolling Road. Walkers are coming from different directions to the school. When they come from the north, they would come down a church lane. They would walk around the parking lot, uh, distancing themselves from the uh, parents dropping uh, children off with cars. Uh, and then they would access the, uh, the front entrance to the building. For those students coming from the south side of the site, they would come down a uh, rolling road or through the, the fields, which are all, all the pathways through the fields are ADA compliant to gain access to the, to the back of the building uh, to that second entrance. So this is the floor plan of the, of the first floor of the building. Uh, it's the, the, the project is mostly a one-story building with a two-story portion. That's that lower left-hand wing. That's two-story portion at the back of the at the back of the site. So again, the main entrance facing Church Lane, the secondary entrance, bus and walker entrance. That's there for arrival and dismissal only. They are linked together by a main uh, avenue that the students will use to access uh, most of the. Uh, the, um, the big areas of the building. And then there's a, a, an entrance to the outdoor learning area that's in that three sided courtyard. Elevator to get to the second floor. The dash line represents uh, the division between academic and public and the, the public really means areas that are going to be used by the by the community uh, after hours, either through parks and recs programs or other programs that would utilize uh, those spaces. To look at the organization of the, the site, the uh, floor plan, administration uh, suite is at the front of the building. They control that vestibule where the arrow is. Um, they will allow people in and out uh, after the uh, arrival and dismissal times. Uh, through that uh, card access area uh, and will buzz people in as necessary to get the credentials from them to let them into the school. There's a faculty workroom in the lower wing uh, circled there and then a faculty dining and, and lounge area again circled near that stairway. The health suite is located directly adjacent to the administrative area. Um, allowing parents to come in for uh, to, to get a sick child. They can come in, check in with the uh, admin area and then not have to traverse through the building uh, to get to their to their child to take them home. Guidance suite again is located near the uh, admin suite again to to facilitate ease of access by parents and teachers uh, from the front door. Preschool is located in that one story wing at the end of the uh, admin wing with three kindergartens, three pre kindergartens, and two uh, preschool uh, classrooms. The regional program, the regional special ed program, is located in the first floor of the two story wing. The special ed resource located in that same wing. There's uh, art and makerspace that are separated by a joint uh, teacher planning area and uh, storage area. The learning commons is located in the center of the building, really the fulcrum of, of learning for, for the children using that, uh, that, that building. Digital learning adjacent to that. And again, as I get back to talking about flexibility, um, a toilet room has been added to that space so that when the when the is when the space isn't being used for digital learning broadcasting of announcements or, or whatever other other uses can take place in there especially for the youngest students that's why the the restroom is located there uh, first and grade classrooms on the uh, the first floor of the two-story wing Extended learning areas, again, flexibility of, of learning uh, is located in the second grade classrooms, second grade and above, get those, get those rooms directly adjacent to the classrooms. There's two collaborative learning areas on that floor. 
uh, two staff collaboration and grade level storage. The paraeducator stat offices. And then on the uh, the other side of that main avenue that connects the two entrances, uh, we have the phys ed uh, area that has increased in size. We now uh, have a gymnasium that is capable of having a, a high school full size basketball court in there with two uh, half half court uh, cross courts. There's an enlarged uh, stage area. Uh, Parks and Rec uh, has had an uh, activity room added to its uh, square footages. So those areas have been joined together. You have the uh, Parks and Rec's office, again, separate toilet rooms there, uh, community serving and storage rooms, along with that activity room that now has its own outside entrance for after use hours. And at the lower right hand corner of the plan, uh, three areas there for rec and park storage and two outdoor accessed toilet rooms. A dining room, again, adjacent to the, the stage area, uh, which is also large, has been enlarged for community use. And there's a movable partition between the dining area, the cafeteria and the, the gymnasium to accommodate a large, large gathering, large community gathering or a large school gathering. The vocal and, and musical classrooms or vocal and instrumental classrooms are located at the back of that, that uh, portion of the, the building. And I wanted to note that that area, along with the areas to the right, the, the green areas and the gray areas, they've all been raised up um, two feet. And that allowed us to do a, a few things. It allowed easy access to, from those music rooms to the back of the stage for performances, for queuing, uh, and resetting the stage for pre presentations and performances. The raising of the grade also allowed us to manipulate the building's uh, situation on the site so that we avoid any uh, retaining walls from that portion of the site down. So we've been able to regrade that through the help of our, our uh, civil engineers to get that grade uh, to work out where uh, vehicular access is good and there's no need for retaining walls. Uh, again, toilet rooms abound throughout the entire uh, project. And you can see here, the, the main thing I'll point out is that um, that in the center there, that large toilet rooms, those are sized to accommodate that, that large gathering that could happen in the cafeteria and gymnasium. Uh, and then that would not require or need access to those other toilet rooms to make the uh, the code counts uh, work. So this is the second floor. Uh, there's three guidance offices up there to uh, again help facilitate movement of of children uh, to special uh, counseling or whatever they need from the uh, the guidance office, so they don't have to go all the way down to the first floor. Again, staff collaboration and grade level storage, uh, classrooms three through five, uh, each one with an extended learning area between them shared, uh, collaborative learning areas, uh, faculty workroom, and again, toilet rooms for, for that particular level. These are some perspectives of uh, how the building uh, is, is conceptually looking at this point. Uh, this is a view from the main drive, the main uh, uh, vehicular drive from Church Lane towards the building. A blow up of that area. You see the main main entrance right near the Scotts Branch Elementary School uh, signage and then to the left where the uh, two people are walking, that would be the entrance to the rec and parks portion of the of the building. Again, going back to what I was talking about uh, in the beginning, we've tried to use horizontal uh, lines, both in the in the proportions of the windows and the canopies and the roof lines to try to pick up uh, that feeling that of the the modernist movement that uh, the, uh, inspired the first. Uh, and the existing building that's there now. 
Again, a view back towards the main entrance, the admin area to the to the center of that. The gymnasium is the high high brick portion. Looking in the, the courtyard, you see the uh, the learning commons there, sort of in the center, all the way in the back of that that area that accesses the outdoor learning area, uh, and then the two story portion with the the grade uh, masonry. Um, stair that's at the end of that that wing there. The rear entry again that you see the buses there that's where they drop off and you can begin to see the rise in the grade uh, there to the right hand side at the front of that bus that, that two foot rise in grade which helps gets us out of providing any retaining walls uh, for the project. Another view of that uh, that entrance to the back. And then a, a conceptual idea of what a classroom could look like uh, in the center of that all the way, you know, in, in the far distance, that's the, the um, extended learning area that's between classrooms, a glass area with a door that, you know, a, a teacher or a special instructor could go in there with a couple of students to, uh, to go over some lessons or some uh, particular needs that they may have. And again, another view out the out the windows. I, I think based on what I'm seeing on the, the chalkboards there, the whiteboards looks like they're doing physics, I think. Uh, and then the gymnasium, uh, this is with the, the uh, paneled wall opened up. So you see all the way to the, the stage in the front and seating where the, the cafeteria would be. And I thank you for your time and I'll answer any questions if I can. Thank you. Uh, are there Thank you. Are there any questions or discussion from the committee? Uh, Mr. Mr. McMillian, please proceed. Yeah, Mr. Dave, how are you? Great, how about yourself? Could you pull up this? There was a, a, a a slide probably four or five ago with the gym. I want to see, it was a flat picture. It wasn't the one, the, the three-dimensional kind of picture. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, yeah. On that, uh, yes, that's the one I was looking at. Looking at the gym, so to, in the dark green, to the right is the recreation activity room that you enter from the outside. Is that correct? Yes. That's right here, Riz. Yes, sir. Okay. And and those two small rooms, that there's two small rooms in between. Are those store rooms or possibly restrooms? These are these are restrooms here. There. For the for for after okay. hours use here. And then the, the restrooms for, for for the gymnasium would be would be these over here. Here. OK. And so those two in between there are storerooms, correct? These so are yeah, these are here. these are these are storerooms here. Uh, this is a Breck and Park storeroom and this is the community serving room here. Yeah. And and I'm just going to say this and I'm not telling you guys how to do your job. That's that's not. I'm just going to share some experience having taught elementary physical education for 10 years and, and taught physical education for a, a total of 35. I was in one setting where there were restrooms right between the gym and the activity room and what so the activity room could could enter from their side and my side could be locked on the gym side and vice versa and that was the only setting that i was ever in like that and that was great because the kids didn't have to leave the gymnasium to go to the bathroom and i actually taught them how to they would go on their own one at a time and into those restrooms so just you know and i'm not recommending that you change your plans at all i'm not saying that I'm just saying that, you know, that's just something to think about. And that space between is, you know, maybe in the future design or something, a, a restroom. Thank uh, you very much. And I'm, uh, I'm very pleased with everything. Thank you. Thank thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions or discussions from the committee? Uh, hearing none, we will uh, thank our presenters and the team for uh, this presentation on the Scotts Branch Elementary 
school proposed design. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. I Ms. now. Harvey. Oh, yes. I apologize, Ms. Harvey. I was just going to simply tell you to start your script whenever you're ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, March 4th, 2024. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faya, will you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. Young? Ms. Hen? Mr. McMillian? Here. I don't think Mr. Young or Ms. Hen are present yet. Uh, thank you, Ms. Faya. We do not have a quorum, so we will pause to determine. Uh, if other committee members are joining, thank you for your patience. Ms. Faye, will you please call the roll again to determine the presence of a quorum? Thank you, Ms. Harvey, yes. Mr. Young? Present. Ms. Hen? Mr. McMillian? Yes, 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 I'm here. Ms. Harvey? Present. Ms. Harvey, there are three. Thank you. We have a quorum. Ms. Faye, will you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Certainly. Dr. Melissa DiDonato? Present. Dr. Jess Grimm? Dr. Raquel Jones? Present. Oh, thank you. Ms. Valerie Holden? Present. Mr. Jim Corns? Mr. Pete Dixit? Present. Ms. Heather Logman. Present. Dr. April Lewis. Present. Ms. Megan Shea. Present. Dr. Melissa Wested. Present. Ms. Charlene Domino. Present. Ms. Jamie Hetzler. Mr. Merrill Plate. 
Present. Mr. Michael Sai. Ms. Melanie Webster. Here. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Liz Becker. Brad Kahujan. Thank you. Jennifer Thank you. Hernandez. Thank Sherry you. Fisher. Christine Schumacher. Justin O'Brien. Lisa Dingle. Chris Hartlow. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vea. We have quite a few contracts to discuss this evening, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, our first contract is uh, tutoring services for grades 4 through 12. And for that, I call on Mr. Hartlow. Sure, and actually, uh, we've got an easy one here. This one has been pulled for a future meeting. Thank you very much. All right. So we we will move on to the next contract, pre-kindergarten instructional materials. So for that, I call on Mr. Hartlow. Sure, um, NTA-507-23, pre-kindergarten instructional materials. This is an increase. Uh, in the maximum contract spending authority. Um, approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $1 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $2 million. This contract modification will provide for the continued purchase of Connect for Learning preschool and pre-kindergarten instructional materials. And it's really, uh, you know, as, as we're um, expanding the number of pre-kindergarten classrooms, we need to uh, expand the use of of uh, these uh, this these materials and supplies. Thank you, Mr. Hartlove. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to contract four. And wait a minute, did I move on? Nope. Contract three: academic and educational goods and services. Mr. Hartlove, please please proceed. Yes, DEI-609-24 Academic and Educational Goods and Services. It's a uh, five-year contract. Uh, this contract will provide portable translation devices for families and multilingual learners for on-site use and real-time interpreting to enhance communications between BCPS staff, multilingual families, and students. Total contract is for $400,000, and it's with a vendor um, with the vendor Pocket Talk Inc. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will move on to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, please proceed. DEI-606-24 Audiovisual Equipment Supplies and Services. It's a new contract, three-year term. Um, this contract will provide interpreter kits for families and multilingual learners for on-site use and real-time interpreting to enhance communications between PCPS staff, multilingual families, and students. Uh, total value, uh, maximum contract spending authority is $300,000, and the vendor name is Audio Resource Group. Are there any questions regarding this contract? Hearing none, we'll move to contract five. NGO-405-24 Destination Management Services for Curriculum Enriched Student Tours. This is a new contract. Um, the term is five years and three months. Um, the contract provides destination management services for curriculum enriched, enriched student tours. The total uh, contract is for seven hundred thousand dollars in the vendors green spring tours are there any questions hearing none we'll proceed to the next contract mr hartlove 
So modification, it's LKO-400-21 Athletics and Physical Education Supplies. It's an increase in the spending authority. Um, this contract modification will provide for continued purchase of athletic and physical education supplies. Approval is requested to increase the contract spending authority by $670,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $2,045,000 um, with multiple vendors. So this is Mrs. Harvey. I just have a quick contract. What is uh, prompting our anticipated need or probable need to increase the spending authority? Um, I believe we have staff on. I know we have. Um, um, let's see who we have here on. Have Dr. Wistead, you want to? Uh, I'm sorry, doc, uh, Dr. Dinanato, do you want to go forward? Sure, this is um, Miss Harvey. This is actually a contract that um, supports both athletics. So as well as physical education, um, so it serves more than just a single purpose within the organization. Um, I can pass it off to uh, Miss Shea or uh, Mr. O'Brien to give you the physical education perspective of it. Um, and then I'm not sure if Mr. Sai is on the call. Sure, thank you, Dr. DiDonato. Um, so, Ms. Harvey, we um, have spent a significant amount of money recently against this contract um, for things like weight room upgrades at the high school. So, this contract would be used when high schools have actually um, either maintained or replaced equipment in their weight rooms. We also had a pretty sizable purchase um, with some grant funds to replace elementary mats for tumbling um, as an effort to increase safety in our PE classrooms. Um, and then when we have new school construction and we open, we often use this contract to equip them as part of their FF&E funds um, as they're purchasing equipment to set up a new um, space. And so between um, current spending that actually exceeded the annual average because we had some of those opportunities, um, as well as planned spending for, um, for example, um, Nottingham Middle School and then other schools as they anticipate those purchases. Um, that's why we anticipate that. And certainly I'll defer to my team to add anything if I forgot anything, but that's just some examples of how the money has been used and how we anticipate continuing to use it moving forward. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, please proceed. Um, sure. The next one is uh, fairly straightforward. It's just a vendor change. Uh, JBO-704-21 plumbing supplies and equipment. And the vendor, um, the consent to assignment uh, is uh, for this contract uh, from Shoemaker and Siler Inc. to Morsco Supply, DBA, Schumacher and Siler. So there's no other impact, just a, just a name change. Are there any questions? Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. JBO-722-18 Total Solutions for Law Enforcement Security Facilities Management Fire Rescue Clothing Marine Craft and Emergency Disaster Response. This is a modification that extends the term uh, by five years and increases the spending uh, authority. Um, contract modification will provide for the continued use of visitor identification system, which is Raptor Technologies. Um, and uh, this will allow for um, uh, documents. It, this documents visitors, screens individuals against the National Sex Offender Registry, and alerts staff of any matches. It also enables staff to know which visitors are in the building should an emergency occur, as they must be addressed in exit and reunification uh, procedures. Approval is requested to extend the contract for five years and increase the contract spending authority by four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to one million. $385,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlove, please proceed with the next contract. Uh, now we have a series of cohorts. Uh, the first one is, and these are all new contracts. Uh, the first one is COH-910-24, Culturally Responsive Graduate uh, Special Educators. 
this is a contract with uh, Bowie State for $216,000, and it allows uh, for uh, the coursework may lead to a master's degree in special education and regular and a regular teaching certificate. Are there any questions? Ms. Harvey, this is Ms. Hen. Please proceed, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, has this program been evaluated by the National Council for Teacher Literacy? I'm sorry, National Council on Teacher Quality, rather. That is a good question, and I, let's see if we have someone on line who can answer that. Um, Hi, uh, this is Dr. This is Dr. Jones, uh, Mr. Harlow. Can you hear me? Sure. Yes, we can. Actually, I see uh, uh, Ms. Lagerman here as well. Yeah. So we are both here um, hmm. to answer um, the questions. I'll let Ms. Lagerman go first, and then I can um, come behind her to answer Ms. Hen's question. Ms. Lagerman. That's okay. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just trying to turn my camera on. Um, <laughs> so in the proposal, you can see that it's aligned. Um, the, it's been aligned to access uh, as well as to um, different strategies along the compass uh, and the equity policy. So um, when you look at the research that has been um, included in there, it says that um, that it does, I can look specifically, I can ask Ms. Domino if she's seen, if it's been evaluated by that particular, particular group, um, but that it does um, stay aligned to the Maryland State Plan for post uh, post-secondary education, and that's where it's through access, success, and fostering innovation, strategies three, four, five, and nine. That's what we have listed on the application, but I don't know if Ms. Domino has any additional information on the um, alignment you request, the evaluation you requested. No, what you reference, um, Ms. Lagerman, is correct in terms of what was submitted by the IHE in alignment with the priority needs of the BCPS compass as well as the equity policy. It is the responsibility of every IHE to be able to meet the legislation um, that is in alignment with the blueprint and what they are held accountable and responsible for in terms of meeting the expectations through their institution. So thank you for that information. I am specifically asking about um, one particular measure um, as reported in the June 2023 report from the National Council on Teacher Quality that looks at the five pillars, specifically at the five pillars for literacy and evaluates both graduate and undergraduate programs um, for educators <laughs> on those pillars. Um, the grades they award are based on whether or not that program meets each of the pillars, and they they reference a general graduate program um, at this institution, um, awarding it a failing grade for not meeting those pillars for literacy. So while it doesn't specifically refer to um, this pr program in particular, I'd like to know how BCPS evaluated it um, and what evidence they've provided that they do use the science of reading in their curriculum. Thank you. Ms. Ann, this is Dr. Jones. Thank you for your um, thank you for your question. We can get back to you in terms of your specific question around, um, you know, the um, review and the um, organization that you mentioned. We don't have that information on hand, but what we will say is that we have partnered as you can see with many of the universities and the, um, the science of reading is something that is at the forefront of their um, literacy programs. And so we can also provide additional documentation that demonstrates that, um, that as well as needed in, a, in future conversations. Thank you, Dr. Jones. So that that's reflected then in the um, curriculum for each of these programs that the board's being asked to approve. So as it relates to the literacy cohorts, is that what you're asking specifically? Specifically for the literacy cohorts. Um, do the curricula for, the for those for programs the represent the, the focus that you just mentioned on the science of reading? And could the board receive those um, curricula to, to review? So we, so we would have to provide you with the specific information around what is, um, what is actually 
um, offered. Keep in mind um, literary programs and the uh, names of courses and things like that take on um, many names and many aspects. So we would have to really look and see exactly um, what it involves um, in terms of the preciseness or accuracy of the term science of reading and how that's come into view more recently. But we can get that information to you so you can be aware of what the- And, and I have offer. one follow-up, Ms. Harvey. So the state's um, focus has shifted to science of reading while it's not specifically in the legislation as of yet. Um, that is the direction that the state has moved in. So you're saying that these programs, these literacy cohorts were evaluated um, using that renewed focus or shift in focus towards the science of reading and that the um, program or course descriptions would reflect that focus, Dr. Jones? I think what, what I am saying is that um, we are well aware of the focus on the science of reading both, both both at the state level and at the national level to make sure that our students are reading on grade level and have the foundational skills that they need regarding those tenets. I think what we're saying as a team is that we would um, go back and provide that because you asked a very specific question around the science of reading being a part of the course offering or being labeled in that way. And we would wanna make absolutely sure that we could provide that to you without saying um, something different outside of outside of that. We are pretty confident that our universities are aligning their work with what is offered now in terms of literacy, but I will not um, go on record as saying that you could see without me double checking to make sure that the science of reading is actually present in, a, Thank a, you. in the terminology in the um, in the curriculum, but we could get that back to you. Get Thank you. Ms. You. Harvey, if you could please facilitate getting that information for the literacy cohorts um, back to the board, I would greatly appreciate it. And Thank you. Ms. Hen, Thank this, you. Is, this is Charlene Domino again. I, I can add that the literacy cohort that will be referenced this evening does specify the science of reading. This is specific to special ed, as Dr. Jones said, referenced. Every um, institute of higher education is in the process of implementing and working on the science of reading in alignment with the legislation. Thank you, Ms. Domino. And I understand Loyola's program is undergoing um, redesign. So hopefully we will see that with their yes. program as well, because that, that's not their current focus, which is the <laughs> reason for my questioning. I appreciate yes. that additional information, ma'am. Thank you very much. I would ask that uh, staff please provide uh, that information to the contract committee, hopefully prior to tomorrow, so that we have time to digest it. I would also ask uh, if the uh, staff could speak to these cohort, cohort uh, contracts uh, and give us information as appropriate on uh, if they've been, if if any interest has been expressed in enrollment by our staff, if that's even a possibility, if the information is even out there for them to uh, respond to, and then uh, what is the interest looking like um, for those cohort programs? I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Did you want me to speak to address that now? For th for this particular contract, yes, and for those cohort contracts moving forward, just briefly, uh, has there has any interest been expressed to you uh, regarding participation in these contract in in these particular cohort programs, uh, and uh, what is that looking like? Sure. So um, the process that um, involves the interactions with the institutes of higher education takes into consideration what the priority needs are of BCPS, but we also have specific requests from individuals that will contact our office and express needs in, um, like, we're looking for a cohort for admin one. I'm looking for something to get um, as 
certification in special education. I'm looking for something specific to math. So when we look at our interactions and needs and what was presented to our um, local colleges and universities, we share um, what our priority needs are. We also share the interests of our uh, faculty in terms of their needs. And then we ask them to consider the needs as well as the priority areas before submitting their proposals for review. The review involves representatives from the academic offices as well as individuals from our office. Um, and it is in consideration, once again, of the priority needs of the system as well as the needs of our employees. Um, the importance is to be able to, once um, board approved, whatever is board approved, to be able to provide the opportunities um, and the communication to the members of our community. So moving forward, our plan pending board approval of any cohorts is to be able to provide um, a university partnership fair that um, we would have representation from all of our local colleges, universities, where they would be able to showcase the um, offerings that they have, as well as any offerings that are um, board approved to be able to share what is in existence for our employees based on their needs and preferences. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Other committee members? Miss Harvey, this is Mr. Young. Yes, sir. Um, I think that was Miss Demina who was answering the question. Just a, a quick follow up slash clarification. So your expectation is associated with each of these cohorts um, is a certain um, number of seats available. So your expectation is that most of those seats for these cohorts will be filled. The goal would to be able to fulfill the seats that are associated with the cohort offerings. Yes. OK, thank you. OK, uh, if there are no other questions, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. Sure, uh, COH-907-24 Morgan State University Master of Science Program in Education Administration and Supervision in Urban educational leadership. This is a new contract. Um, a successful completion of the coursework may lead to a master's of science in educational administration and in supervision with a focus on urban educational leadership. A total uh, maximum spending authority is $148,500. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. COH-903-24 Stevenson University Post Baccalaureate Certificate in liter Literacy ed Education. Um, this will uh, lead to uh, teachers receiving a post baccalaureate certificate in literacy education. Maximum contract spending authority is $90,000. And again, it's with Stevenson University. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. COH-904-24 Stevenson University National Board Teaching Professional. Um, this is it will it will lead to teachers receiving their uh, NBC uh, certification and uh, the total cost or the maximum contract spending authority is $78,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed. Mr. Hartlove. COH-905-24 Towson University Masters Master of Science in Mathematics Education, Elementary and Middle uh, School Teachers, um, leading to a Masters of Science in Math in Mathematics Education. It's $180,000 total uh, maximum contract spending authority. And again, it's with Towson University. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Ms. Harvey, Rod McMillian. Please proceed, Mr. McMillian. Uh, 
this morning at, at 11.51, Ms. Dobinowski infor informed us that she would not attend tonight's meeting, but she had a couple questions, of which Ms. Harvey asked a question about interest. I'm curious, Ms. Logman, did you have time to look at the question Ms. Uh, Dobinowski constructed about uh, how many teachers are qualified to enroll in these openings? Out yes. of our not, you know, we probably have what 9,800 teachers are there about. Any idea how many would be qualified to even apply for these positions? Sure. Actually, I did take a look at that based on the um, the information that was requested and looked at um, each one by cohort, so we can do it that way. And then also um, looked at the fact that we have about 5,000 um, uh, teachers with the APC um, that they. They, we can look at through them, they would be eligible. It would just be depending on the content area as to which one that they would be eligible for. So, for example, we would have about 1,800 eligible for the special ed um, one with Bowie. We um, would be able to have anyone apply for an admin one because as long as they're certified, they would fall into that category. Um, then, for example, for the literacy cohort, um, that would be about over 400. Um, the NBC with Stevenson, anyone would be eligible. We currently have 94 national, nationally board certified teachers. Um, the one that we're talking about right now, the elementary and middle school math, about 2,800 would be eligible for that one. The secondary math, um, the next one that's up, over 400 would be eligible. And the last one, the um, ELL graduate certificate, anyone would be eligible as a certificate to add on if, as long as they're certified. And, and like I said, we have over uh, 5,000 5, that would have um, either their APC or their SPC. Ms. Logerman, thank you very much for answering Ms. Dobinowski's question. I know that that was, a, that was an involved answer. Thank you very much for your time and your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is Mrs. Harvey. Just to follow up on that question and get some perspective here. How many total positions are eligible uh, are available for staff for for all of these cohorts? So you mean open jobs at this point? For participation in these cohorts, if you add them all up, how many people are eligible to participate? How many slots are there for people to participate? Right, so if you if you look at the total number of slots, they're listed for each one where it's um, anywhere from most of them are 20 slots um, and then some of them are 15 and 30, but um, that's the question I was just answering as far as um, it would just depend on each cohort as to how many would be eligible to apply for, for example, those 20 right. slots. It would be anywhere. Understood. Yeah, understood. I appreciate it. I, I'm just, I, I guess I, I yep. really just want it to be clear that we're talking about less than 200 slots in these programs. Correct. Yes, you can see each one has a different amount, but yes, most of them for, are 20, some of them are more. Right. Yes. For 5,000 eligible teachers. So huh. the pool, the pool of eligibility far exceeds the number of uh, available slots to participate. Correct. And we also still offer tuition reimbursement, so that would be another avenue for anyone to pursue who was not interested um, in, in one of these cohorts as well. So that's one of the wonderful things we like to promote about BCPS is that we offer um, both things to our employees as a benefit of employment. Thank you so much. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. OK, the next one sounds very similar, but it's a little bit different. COH 902-24 Towson University Masters, Master of Science in Mathematics Education. This is just for secondary school teachers um, and uh, leads to a Master's of Science in Mathematics Education. And a couple bullets down, it says enrollment is open to 20 BCPS teachers. Um, so and I, I was following with what Ms. Lagerman was saying, most of them seem like they're, you know, smaller numbers of, of folks that are um, open that the that enrollment is open for. Thank you. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. Yes, and this is the last cohort, COH-906-24, Towson University, Teaching English Learners Graduate Certificate. Um, 
it will uh, lead to a teaching English learners graduate certificate. Um, and uh, it is uh, the total maximum contract spending authority is $72,000. Are there any questions? Uh, hearing nothing, uh, I just like to uh, I know that this is a cohort all around recruitment and retention, and I appreciate the information you provided uh, regarding this particular uh, group of contracts. If there are no other questions or comments, we'll move on to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, please proceed. Sure, NGO-411-24 research for better teaching. This is a new contract. Um, this contract will provide professional learning services for teachers, teacher leaders, administrators at the elementary, middle and high school level and, uh, and central office. Um, contract will provide for professional learning on the elements of highly effective teaching and the skillful observation and evaluation of instruction. Total contract is uh, for $627,125. Dollars and it's uh, with a vendor uh, research for better teaching. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. Sure. Um, LLY 406 22 Workforce Management Systems and Related Products and Solutions. This is a one year extension. Um, for our uh, timekeeping software, which is uh, uh, Kronos. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixon. So good evening again. The next contract is CWA 105-20 which is for maintenance and repair of warehouse equipment. Our request is for adding $100,000 to that contract uh, to increase the amount to $400,000. And the funds are operating budget funds. The contract is used for uh, repairing warehouse equipment and is used by uh, facilities management, uh, transportation, food and nutrition services. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Dixon. The next contract is RGA-146-08. This is for lease extension of an existing building. Um, as a background, we have three different leases today for, for up for renewal. This one is for uh, the Meadowood Education Center and uh, the request is to extend the contract for seven years and increase the spending authority by two million four forty three oh twenty nine. Um, the contract was original contract was approved by the board in on June 21st, 1996. Uh, if there is any question, so the the new amount will be seven million three hundred sixty thousand three hundred and fifty fifteen dollars. Are there any questions? Ms. Harvey, this is Ms. Hen. Uh, please proceed, Ms. Hen. Thank you, ma'am. And good evening, Mr. Dixit. Good evening. I, I have one question that pertains to this contract as well as the next one for Rosedale. And that is, do these facilities have additional capacity should we require it? Meaning, is there room for growth? And can you speak to um, the current enrollment versus that excess capacity that might be available, either in the space we lease now or in adjacent space that could be used? So this lease is specifically for a certain square footage. Um, mm -hmm. The total enrollment right now is about 40 students and it can I know it can go at least up to 80 students. Right, that answers my question. Could Would you also mind answering that for Rosedale if if Madam Chair doesn't mind? Uh, why don't we, we 
Rosedale is next, so let's let's wait. Let's finish the discussion on this contract. Okay. No problem. Thank you, Miss. Be efficient. Thank you. <laughs> That's okay. We'll we'll proceed in an orderly fashion. Are there any other discussion questions for uh, Mr. Dixon for this contract? Hearing none, we'll move to the next contract, Mr. Dixit. So the contract is MWE-803-17A. dash dash It is for lease space for the old Rosedale Center. This is the new building we are talking about. And the request is uh, to extend the contract for three years and increase the spending authority by 1,197,076 to make the total contract amount $6,885,631. And uh, I'm looking at the question that Ms. Hen asked. Uh, the Rosedale Center current enrollment is 107 students. And I know it can take additional students, but I don't know how many. Um, the, the number fluctuates and we have never received a complaint that there's not enough, enough space there. I have my team member, Miss Becker, uh, who, if, Liz, if you have any idea about the total capacity, would you mind sharing with us? No, I don't have the exact total capacity that it could take because it does fluctuate, but it is also only high school students now. In past, it used to be middle school and high school, so um, now, uh, one of the other facilities has the middle school. So they're up and down in there. Uh, when I was talking to the administration, they said it, it comes and goes, but they're at um, 107 when I had spoken to them. So I don't know if they could handle more, but um, I can't, I just can't talk to, speak to, you know, how many they could handle. But it's one of our largest facilities anyways, for the alternative schools. This is Mrs. Harvey. Oh, in I, in follow up. Uh, follow up to Ms. Hen's question, do you have uh, any information on what the highest capacity has been given that it fluctuates? This, since I've been doing the leases, this has been the highest capacity they've had. Okay, would you all please uh, provide us with the capacity for the building in response to Ms. Hen's question? Sure. We'll sure. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hen, did you have another question? No, thank you, Mrs. Harvey. You're welcome. Uh, we'll proceed. Are there any other questions or points of discussion from the committee? Ms. Harvey, Rod McMillian. Mr. McMillian, please proceed. Yeah, Mr. Pete, Meadowood was 14,000 square feet and Rosedale is, is 30,000 square feet. Do they still use an industrial standard cost per square foot? Is that something you guys look at at all? I'm curious if if you do, I'm curious how those two square footage compares the Meadowood versus versus Rosedale square uh, the cost of of a square foot. So that's that standard. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we work with a leasing agent um, uh, who assist us in finding the square footage cost in each neighborhood and for each building. And then we negotiate that amount and we try to get the best amount that we can. And sometimes um, it helps us if we increase the term of the lease. So for, for example, a five-year lease in some cases may be co more cost effective than a three-year lease. So we look at the future of the program. We look at the cost of neighboring buildings for what they are paying and make sure that it is uh, 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 it is competing with those costs. So to compare Meadowood versus Rosedale, is that like comparing apples and oranges? You said that, and it really depends on, uh, you know, just like homes, different neighborhood, different locations have different costs. And that's why we, we this negotiation and looking at the cost takes several months. Ms. Becker and her team is communicating with the leasing agent who's expert in, in finding the price in any neighborhood and the type of building. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pete. Thank you. Are there any further questions from the committee? 
Mrs. Harvey, this is Miss Hen. I just have a quick follow up. Please proceed, Miss Hen. Thank you. And thank you to Mr. McMillian for pointing out the square footage um, for those two contracts. I did want to ask Mr. Dixit, um, sir, do you know if the usable square footage is comparable? In other words, 30,000 square feet at Rosedale is approximately the same percentage usable for student capacity that we would find at Meadowood. In other words, can we compare based on the enrollment? You had mentioned 80 being the capacity and we're looking at double the square footage for Rosedale. That's, so is 160 a ballpark? So that's a very good question again. Uh, the size of the facility is determined by two key factors. One is the educational program and two is the number of students that are projected to be in that facility. So we look at the program, we look at the program needs. Uh, when I say needs in terms of the space needed, the square footage needed. So in a way it is no different than designing and building a new school. Each school uh, and just like each school, we look at the program, we work with the educational curriculum and instruction folks to f find out what programs are going to be in there and then develop a square footage for facility. Did I answer your question? Um, somewhat. I, I think where I'm struggling a bit is, you know, the enrollment is more predictable with a traditional um, school versus an alternative program um, whose demand fluctuates, right, based on the need for um, capacity on an almost ad hoc basis. For some students um, that as is as needed it short in some cases short term so that that enrollment fluctuates more than at a traditional traditional facility so i'm asking in order to understand our maximum capacity let's say from a policy decision we were to expand and include middle um, school again at rosedale i'm just tossing that out there um, would I'm interested in knowing would we have the capacity of that facility and how many how many students could we serve? So the capacity that is used is the best estimate that uh, uh, planning projections uh, provide us, which is very similar to school. When we look at the size of school, you use the best projection numbers that are available. And in some cases, uh, if the population increases, then we may have to look at another facility depending on the program again and depending on the facility. So if you mix a high school program with a middle school program, the space needs um, will be somewhat different because the programs will be different. So this is um, each space is for the program that is going to be offered and for a projected number of students. So there is a, a number, and as Ms. Harvey asked, you'll provide the board with that um, maximum capacity for these two facilities. We, we, we have that number, I assume. We will definitely look at, look at it, see if we have number at the time we, um, we built that facility that created that space. Uh, so it may not be as exact as it is for a typical school, but we'll have some sure. idea. Yeah, yeah. So we'll okay. have some idea and we'll provide you with that number. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the next contract, Mr. Dixit. So the next contract is uh, DEI-604-24 for asbestos abatement services. And the request is um, to, uh, to have a contract for in the amount of $4,500,000. Most of the work is done um, using operating budget funds. Some amount, about 11% is for capital projects. A lot of capital projects have their own um, uh, asbestos removal part or environmental issue part uh, uh, on the project. This contract- Other questions? I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. Dixon. Uh, no, that's that's all. I was just Are going to expiration date of the previous contract, which is March 31st, 24.
Are there any questions? Ms. Harvey, I have a question. This is Mr. Young. Please proceed, Mr. Young. Mr. Dixit, um, when I look at this, this is a new contract, correct? Well, if I recall correctly, there was a contract. There was always, but this particular one is not renewal. Um, the, this is, and I have um, Melanie Webster here. Maybe she can help me. Is this a new contract, Ms. Webster? Let me take a look. I do not believe so. We have we have had abatement contracts yeah. consistently. Yeah. Yes, this was this is a replacement contract. So I guess in, in using your term, Mr. Young, it is a new contract, but it is replacing an old contract for the similar services. OK. All right. Um, that basically answered my question because, you know, at the bottom it it uh, says year five of five. So this is really a a new contract replacement. Th thank you. Okay. You may proceed, Ms. Harvey. Are there any further questions from the committee? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract, Mr. Dixit. So the next contract is ASI-808-22. It is modification uh, construction services for artificial turf field. Um, this is one year contract uh, with the same vendor, I believe that Baltimore County's contract has. Uh, it, it is the fourth one year option extension. And, and the contract that Baltimore County government uses, the contract master agreement number 00004365. The requested amount is $6 million. Any questions? Are there any questions from Ms. the Young, or Excuse me, Ms. Harvey. Uh, please proceed, Mr. McMillian. Mr. Pete, back, back in the day, you had an option on an artificial turf. You could turf the, the rectangle space of like a football field, and or you could also turf the curves at each end of the field so that the entire space inside the track was turfed. What option are we doing there? We are we turfing the entire space? Or are we turfing just the rectangle? Very, very good question again. Um, the In the old time, we were using Baltimore County services and they were only doing the rectangular part. Since we are doing on our own, we include the curve part also. So all of the new turf fields that we are doing include what I call D's at the end of the uh, field. Okay. And and because those tracks, that space would be pretty standard among all high schools because it's the inside of the existing track. What is the cost for that nowadays? So the previous ones we did were a, around a million dollars. So, um, you know, I remember some of them in the old days used to be eight hundred and fifty, nine hundred thousand dollars. But the last one we did was a million dollar. So give and take, that's what the best estimate is. So this contract will cover uh, anywhere from four to five based on including the escalation cost over, uh, you know, over a certain time. Yeah, and, and just a tidbit, something that I think is extremely interesting, that price is, is stayed relatively the same over a 15 or 20 year period, because when I looked into that years ago, the rectangle itself was 800,000 and the curves was about a million too. So yeah. for about a million dollars for that entire surface to be uh, to to be laid down, I think that's a pretty good price myself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Uh, we will proceed to the next contract, Mr. Dixit. So the next contract is RGA-103-10, and this is for the lease um, for the Southwest Area Infant and Toddlers Program. 
the request is uh, for an extension and modification. This will provide for the continuation of the current lease. The space is located at 7108 Ambassador Road, Woodlawn, Maryland. Uh, the additional amount is $407,163, $407,163. Uh, the total amount becomes $1,362,893. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Dixit. So the next contract is ARA-219-19 for the storage tank and associated services. And this is for the installation, modification, upgrades, and preventing maintenance to underground and or above ground storage tanks uh, in com compliance with uh, federal and local regulations. And the current contract is spending authority is a million five hundred thousand. We are requesting another million six hundred thousand uh, dollars. The rationale, the reason for this additional amount is um, that we have received funding uh, for additional projects under the ESSER grant, and, and that's the reason for additional amount. Are there any questions? Hearing none, I'd like to thank all the staff for your participation and in the information you've provided uh, to us as a committee. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 24 be moved to the full board for approval. Oh, uh, Ms. Harvey, I'm sorry, uh, that uh, contract one, we, we pulled that. I, uh, I apologize. You that's are OK. <laughs> Let me reframe that. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items two through 24 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Young. Is there a second? I'll second it, McMillian. Thank you, Mr. Young and Mr. McMillian. Uh, may I have a roll call vote, Ms. Vea? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. There being all in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts 2 through 24 will be moved forward to the full board. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held on Monday, April 6, 2024 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all very much for joining us and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.